for the table, it's not quite yet done. They are qualified, they already knew that, but PSV, of course, have closed the gap now to two points, so Arsenal will need to match PSV's result next week. Arsenal at home to Zurich, therefore, have to win to be certain of finishing top of Group A and missing that playoff round in the new year, saving themselves two games in the process. So a win next week now required after tonight's defeat. Joe and Martin have been watching with me. Martin, bad night? Yeah, disappointing. First defeat in 10, as, as we know. Um, it will be hurting in that dressing room. I think he made five changes before tonight's game and thought that was going to be enough. He believed in the players and it didn't work out. And they were second best, certainly. De Jong coming off the bench. Arsenal didn't seem to have any answers to that physicality when he mm. was you know, pumping balls into him. Um, the atmosphere was difficult for them. And in the end, it's one of those that are going to have to go away and lick their wounds and come back strong at the weekend. We talked at half-time maybe about how resolute they were at yeah. the back, but the two goals, you've both seen weaknesses. Yeah, very poor for the two goals. You know, for the first half, they was resolute, they were mm. together, they, they were diligent, they, the, the line was good, but here on this occasion, Rob Holding gets the wrong side, he gets turned by De Jong, and then Lukonga just switches off. And those are the basic mistakes, that the fundamentals that get you that get you through. They, they was off it on this occasion, weren't you've they? You've got to stay goal side. A big man coming on, six foot three, six foot four. Holding's got to come across there. Yeah, he sees and, him. Yeah, in that sort of position, just be behind, but you can get protection. Lukonga could do more, actually, with the initial ball. And then he just switches off Lukonga. Mm. He's got to be breaking. He's got to be breaking every sinew in his body to get back there and get a block in. Yeah. And it's just an easy finish in the end. Goalkeeper, really no chance. But he shouldn't be getting that kind of space. That... that that clip there, if like Mikel Arteta shows that to his players and to, about the details and the fundamentals, if they, if they were to nail that down like they did in the first half, they come away with a point in this game or they win the game with some bit of magic. But it's a little, it's, there's more questions and answers for, for him tonight. But he needs to. He, he was he ruthless to, though. Both players were hooked. Yeah. They were straight away. Within minutes <laughs> yeah. of that mistake. So he's identified where he thinks the problem was. Yeah. Uh, now, it's quite a tough school. On mm. the second goal, Ramsdale, Tierney. Both of those, what, what do you see? But again, De Jong, it's Tierney's picking him up and straight away I'm screaming at the telly, why is he doing that? And then I think Ramsdale comes, thinks he can cure it, he can come and answer that problem, but it's a big haymaker. It's one of those he should be going with a straight arm, more control, mm. uh, and it's wild. But look, Tierney doesn't even get off the ground and what not even sure why Tierney is actually coming up against him. Like, it's not a foul, is it, that he's got his arms on Tierney's no, shoulders? No, and I think in the build-up no. to that, Matt, if I'm, if I'm with Joe there and Joe's picking up this big foot, I'm going to actually make myself available to mm. come and help him and actually be yeah. available to head that. Mm. Yeah. Holding didn't do that. I've done that role when you're, when you're yeah. blocking and, and the, what you really you have to get, you have to get contact. You're not enough where you, you get pansy and, and give away a penalty, but Tierney needs to back into Luke Jong, so on his jump, affect him. affect him, and he just didn't there, and then obviously Ramsdale needed to come and do better with a punch. Just a bad week? I know the draw at yes. Southampton, uh, let's not get too excited, but now... Don't want, to be, don't want to be too critical to this group of players, because we've, 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 we've enjoyed watching them play, and mm. they're putting the wins together, and Arsenal fans are getting very excited, but today's a little reminder that there's still, there's still work to do. Yeah, uh, they're still playing in Zurich, so that isn't... Uh, in fact, hearing Zurich have actually taken the lead against Bodo, so that... Won't make any difference effectively to Arsenal's job next week. They still need to win to be sure. Uh, but what it means is he'll have to pick a stronger team as he thinks they, he needs to beat Zurich three days ahead of Chelsea. That's what it actually means to Arsenal. Yeah, that's difficult for him. And I fully expect them to do that. It's just that you don't want this result to derail the team. I think he knows now that it really needs to be, though, when they have a difficult test, to have his best 11. Five people missing tonight from the start, put five subs on. Mm. And of course, you know... The strength in depth, mm. not quite there. But when they're not playing regularly, you get these mistakes here and there, Matt. But I, I think as long as they can learn from this, they'll be hurting. Yeah. But they use that then as fuel going into the Forest game at the weekend. It's a bit of calmness, I suppose. Yes. And we, we, we both looked at Mikel Arteta. He's got a very young backroom staff now. You know, and it's all been pats on the back so far and everything's been going well. Wins and there's been fireworks going off at the Emirates and everyone's been in a good mood. Yeah. Now he's going to have to lift Rob Holding. He might need him. Mm. He's going to have to lift Lokonga. Oh. If, if Party gets injured, he's going to need him. So there's a different challenge to his management now. You know, this, this, these coming days before the Forest game, you've got to lift the team, yeah. remind them how good they are, and just to do the basics well, and they'll go and get the result of the weekend. What you don't want is what Martin said, is you don't want this to affect yeah. now going into the Premier League. Thank you, Joe. You're staying with us. Martin, thank you as always. Uh, your work here is done for tonight, but we're going to need you next week as Mikel Arteta is now going to need another week to get Arsenal Mikel at top Arteta spot. would have needed him. Indeed. <laughs> and Martin watching with me. And nobody likes an offside line 
more than Martin. And it's worked, Martin, to very good effect. Twice. Yep, two goals disallowed and down to a very good line. A line that is prepared to stay high and drop off when necessary. And I think that is what's kept Arsenal in the game tonight. Mm. Because, you know, it's one of these... Look at the body position of these defenders. They're covering off the runs. For me, straight away, I'm screaming offside because it's a really good line. Keeper's a bit late coming out. And then the linesman just confirmed that. Look, really good line. They're all together. They're covering off the runners. They know where each other are. The good communication. And it's just a matter of time before the flag will eventually come up. And, of course, we thought, didn't we, just before half-time that they'd scored yet again. But, again, look, that line is coming up, pushing up. And that initial ball that goes in catches them offside. It's a little bit sloppy here. I'd like to see someone take better responsibility. But because they have a good line, yeah. you see from this angle, look, I really like that. Not a lot of pressure on the ball, but they're prepared to say, do you know what, let's get up together. Perfect line. And then they catch their opponent offside. I mean, it's a gutter for him, isn't it? Because yeah. he's done so much good work after that. Yeah, we, we give him the build-up. And he, he, he's been busy, he's mm. been bright, he's, he's got on the ball. He, he's been one of the better players in the final third, you know, but... Like Martin said, it's not often you associate this Arsenal team for many, many years since Martin's days where you think defence have really kept them in the game there. Some bright, bold, diligent defending and the line was excellent. And going forward, they was, they was pretty poor. Yeah, they, they've created scenarios, Arsenal, yeah. but then been a bit sloppy by their yeah, standards up yeah, front. Yeah, and Martinelli in particular, I'm a big fan of his, but he's had an off night. And, 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 and you know, so often they were picking the wrong pass, the timing of the movement. No, in this situation, they're just a simple five-yard pass from Vieira. Didn't, didn't quite work out. They're getting the bodies forward, mm. comes out wide. Good occupation of the box. And then just, it was falling down at the last minute. You know, this, this Arsenal team, we've seen them flow so much this year, but just not in this occasion. This t turn, just dillying and dallying on the ball and not really getting it. And, and, it, and then it was one I of think the nights. Joe, I think when you're making these changes, five changes, it, it just affects the flow, affects the rhythm. Um, but tonight, the touch, first touch for each player, not quite what you'd, what you'd expect. I think Arteta will be in there now saying, come on, guys, let's get the basics right. Control the thing first. They just can't get over that. That was a really good opportunity. And he knows there's more that he can get out of this team. Definitely better, he'll be expecting better in this second half from he, Arsenal. He won't be worried about that end of the pitch. I think he'll be one of them. He'll get the lads in and say, listen, we've got away with one there. Big thumbs up to the back four and, and, and the goalkeeper keeping him. And I know you guys can do better, and they probably will. You've got Saka on the bench. Yeah, Jesus. Different yeah. ball game. Yeah. He's off again. He doesn't hang around, Mikel Arteta. Well done, Becky. There's the team, Martin. Now, they don't do draws, really, Arsenal. Certainly haven't done for a while, although they did at the weekend. Are we getting a little bit exercised about a 1-1 at Southampton? Is everyone getting a bit carried away? Yeah, of course. Uh, you know, I still think it was a very good performance. Maybe the players were getting a little bit tired. People mm. don't like talking about that, do they? Young men, you know, paid a lot of money. But, yeah, it comes into it. And this is a really good examination for this team. This is what I would call a proper European fixture tonight. He's gone strong again. He yes. needs to keep that momentum going. Um, and if you think about the development of these players, this is a good one to have. Great atmosphere there tonight. And they can really you know, put things to one side now, win this competition. Because, obviously, they've got Chelsea coming up after the next game against Zurich. Yeah. They don't want to have to go into that game really needing to win the match with a game against Chelsea three days later. So, no, get the job done tonight. I think he's picked the right team to do that as well. So, maybe gone strong, Joe, do you think, to, to kind of keep the rhythm of this start of the season, but also to get this group fully sorted with a week to spare. Yeah, and I think, it, respect to PSV as well, this is a real tough game. Martin's right, this is a Champions League game. Mm. It could possibly well be next year, both teams. Um, I think he, I, I, I like the look of the team. You know, Martinelli coming... I think he, he'd have had both things in mind. I think he, he wants to get it put to bed, like Martin said, before the, the big Chelsea game was coming up, which is, which is a big test for them. But also... I, th I think with, he, he likes his rhythm. He mm. likes his rhythm. You know, when these players are playing well, just, just keep, let them keep going. Let them keep playing. You know, and this, there's something we, we talked about earlier. I think there's something special happening at Arsenal at the moment. And the last thing you want to do is a, a performance against Southampton that derails it and the players lose a little bit of confidence because they're all brimming with confidence. Even the lads we've seen coming in, the likes of Vieira, who was excellent a couple of weeks ago. So just, just a bit of continuity, I think. Part of that continuity comes from Granit Xhaka. Now, it's yeah. three years to the day the stats tell me, that he was effectively booed off against Crystal Palace. Yep. Uh, now, a week can be a long time in football. Three years is a, is a lifetime. I know he's had, his, he's had his moments, Martin, with Arsenal, but he's, he's never had better time than this, has he? No, and I think his recent form now, he completely draws a line onto this uh, moment in his career. This was when he thought he was about to leave. 
Um, of course, Mikel Arteta has really believed in him, seen that he was really necessary for the development of this young group. And he's been an ever-present now mm. in this team, whether it be the midweek team, as it is today, or at weekends. And he's, his position is becoming much more advanced, Joe. He's, he's now playing like a box-to-box -box midfield player. And in, in the recent games, he's scoring goals off his right foot. Not done that before. Two in two, yeah. in the similar position. And I think he's just been given that licence now. A bit like the Man City midfield players do. And I'm you know, going to say Arteta is copying a little bit what Pep Guardiola does. Midfield players either side of a deep look deep sitting player get forward and now Xhaka is doing that very well. I imagine midfielders love that, don't they? Oh God, he, he'd, he'd be loving it. I mean, he was seen early on in his Arsenal days as a bit of a, a bit of a destroyer, someone who would break up the play and lend it. But he's, give, you know, I think having Martinelli outside him, which constantly keeps the opposition honest, allows that little pocket for him to run into and score goals. He's a good finisher. He's a lovely technician. We've seen him score some some, some weldies in his career, mm. and I think it's important for him as well to, like Martin said, to draw a line under that situation. Now he's a good player. He's one of the leaders in the dressing room. He's obviously got a good personality that brings this club forward. You know, and, and, and I think he's so important for this club. But I think we just 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 be, be happy if you're an Arsenal fan, Arsenal player, on he's what he's doing now. He's got to get the balance right. Because, yeah. uh, you know, as a midfield player, I would like my midfield players, I had Manny Petit and Patrick Vieira. So I want them to come home, yeah. sit there occasionally, pick and choose the right times. And sometimes against Southampton, he was in Martinelli's space. So that, and it was breaking down. So he's got to get that right. But he's certainly developed in a way that we never expected three years ago. And fair play to him for doing that. Mikel, you, you must be disappointed with how your team competed there over the 90 minutes. Yeah, um, it's the end of a long run and uh, today is the first defeat after a long, long period. It's time to reset, it's time to analyse what happened. Obviously, <coughs> congratulations to PSV, they were the better team, they deserve to win the game, there's no question about that. And uh, we were nowhere near our, our level today and especially the way we competed. Yeah, you did look a bit off when, in, in some of the one, one against one, some of those duels. Um, why do you think that was? They were on top of that. Last week it was all hours and today it was very, very different. And when that happens against top teams, it's very difficult to win. Apart from many other aspects that uh, today we were extremely poor. James? Hey, Cal, you say it's time to reset. The last, it's time to reset. In the last few games, maybe Southampton and, and Leeds, We've seen an Arsenal team that struggled a bit in the second half. Is this a result and a performance that in some ways you've seen coming? I don't know. We have periods where we've been excellent and periods where we have uh, suffered. And for sure, we haven't had the consistency throughout 95 minutes to maintain the level that, that we want. And this is the next challenge and this is the next team or this team. Uh, but today, I think it was very different right from the beginning. Uh, even though in the first half, we have periods that we control the game. I didn't feel that we had the threat and, um, and the aggression that we've been playing at. And, uh, and that was worrying. And then the second half, yeah, the moment something went wrong, we just uh, went down and we didn't find really moments that to give us some hope to react and get something out of the game. Dan? Yeah, how concerned are you by some of the individual performances tonight, not just the overall team performance? That's fine. It's, it's uh, my responsibility to do that, to get the best of out of the players. And um, I will never do that. These players, they've been exceptionally good. They've been performing at a level that probably no one expected. And, um, and it's down to us and especially down to me to get the best out of them. That's it. Right. Mikel, can I just ask you about next week? Obviously, Zurich's no longer a, a dead rubber. Does it affect your team selection now moving forward, having potentially planned to rest? Well, we never plan to, to have um, a day off on that fixture because we know how difficult it is to win in Europe and just have to see the other groups and, and where everybody is. We are in a really good position. We won four games and we have to find, um, finalise the job against Zurich at home in, in a week's time and uh, we will have to prepare for that. Guy in the blue shirt there. Hi, Mikel. Uh, just on Matt Turner, uh, could you explain what happened there? Yeah, yesterday in training he had uh, some discomfort in, in his groin and he tried this morning, but um, he wasn't well, so Aaron had to play. So not serious at all? I don't know. We'll have to assess him. He didn't look a serious injury. No. One at the back. Guy in the white T-shirt at the back. Hi, Mikel. A uh, question about uh, Xavi Simons. He made it really hard for your defence. What is your opinion about him? What I'm, I'm not here to talk about players uh, from the opponent. I've got enough with, with my players. Okay, one in the front here. 
Can you hear me? Yeah. yeah. Um, are you aware of the reports in Italy that Pablo yeah. Mario has been stabbed in Milan? If so, what's your what do you know I, about I it? Ju I just found out. I know that Edu has been in, in touch uh, with his relatives and uh, that he's in hospital. And he seems to be okay, but um, I don't know. I would have a, a briefing now about the situation, what happened, and obviously we'll be in touch with him, and hopefully he's, um, he's okay. Okay, Nick? Okay? Yeah? Okay. Is there, one more? Is there one more there? One more here, and then we'll do a couple for Nottingham Forest, yeah? So one here. Thank you. Uh, hi, Miguel. I've got a question about the uh, playing style of the Netherlands. My question is, what is an aspect from Dutch football that you as Arsenal can develop from because you play in the Premier League, which is a very different style of playing football? What do you think you as Arsenal can learn from Dutch football in comparison to what you normally play in England? About the style of play, you mean? Well, I've I always been a big admirer. Obviously, you have to look in, in football history, the, the players and the teams that they have been... Uh, Examples uh, for generations and the way they play. Johan is one of my idols, so he had always a big influence in the way I think about the game. Let's go to Aaron, who's an Arsenal fan. Or Azza? Azza? Yeah, is, so, that, is that your nickname? You. Do people call you Azza? Um, not really. No, I've never heard of that one. What's your nickname? What do you mean? My name's Aaron. What do you mean? What's what's you mean? Azza? Is it Azza? I normally, normally get called Aaron. Az, <laughs> I'm a dad. Az? You get called Az? I'm a dad, and that's about it. Right. What about what about your mum? Um, Aaron. Right. Yeah, your mum always about, calls you by your proper name, yeah. though, don't they? Everyone call you Ronnie. Ronnie. No. Aaron. No, Ron. Ron. At the end. No. Of it, no. Well, I've got called Alan before, but that's just because of a. <laughs> of a of I'm a mumbling. Alan, go on now. <laughs> As are you, are you a bit bit worried about this Arsenal squad? Uh, well, yes and yes and no. Worried about the the squad squad depth, maybe. Um, I think we've seen that in the last well, a few games, really, where we've got the game coming in Thursday, Sunday, Thursday, Sunday. We can't really afford to play the same 11 every week, and it's showing where games like against this evening, where we have to make changes. Mm -hmm. Our B team isn't, isn't strong enough. PSV are a good team, but they're PSV who are in the Europa League because they couldn't get past Rangers. So... They're a good team, but at the same time, they can't. They lost the Rangers at home. Yeah, good so point. It's just, it's just the squad depth, really. I mean, if you look back at our results recently, we've only scored one against Southampton, one against PSV at home, one away to Leeds, one away to Bodo. Good team. We should be scoring more, really. And then so if you look back at for our fixtures, where we've had our good performances, mm. it's where we've had a, a nice break in between, in between, like the Brentford game, for example. That was... um. 10 days after we went to Zurich and 3 0 away at Brentford's a cracking result. And that's because we can play our full strength team that are fully rested. But when we're going into the games one after another, that's proving to be a bit, a bit difficult. And our mm. second string players, do they're you, good. Aaron, do you think, you, do you think, I know, look, he's put together a really good 11. You know, Arteta. And look, it takes time. You need a few transfer windows. You spent a few quid. But there was an opportunity, I think, towards the end of the transfer window where. You were crying out for a centre mid, and you didn't get it over the line. I think you was in for Louise, Douglas Louise. Louise. Douglas Louise. Yeah. So I think they were addressing that they needed someone, and it didn't happen. Do you think that might come back to bite you? I hope not. I think what Edu and Arteta are doing, which which has worked and it hasn't, is they wait to get the right players. And I can understand that, but then we looked at January last season, um, January transfer window where we didn't sign anyone and got a lot of players out and that did backfire but then they came around to some and they made some really good signings so I'm just hoping that come January again get through these next few games um, and hopefully with a bit of luck we can find some players to strengthen our team so I think uh, like for example if Partey gets injured mm. we we don't have Lokonga's not a Partey replacement I think he's, he needs to play in like a Odegaard position, which he, he can't do. He's being played in parties position, which isn't isn't his position. He's just getting he's getting found out every game, which is un the wheels unfair. are falling yeah. off, has not it? The wheels are falling off. Not, not, not quite. Nah, they're falling off, as you're done. That's <laughs> it. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 not yet. Yeah, look, you got Nottingham Forest at the weekend. You lose that, and you know it's, you're going to start crumbling down the table, end up like Liverpool. You, but Aaron made a great point about scoring goals. Jesus hasn't scored now for is it five, nearly six games now? Yeah, that, he's that, having a bit of a drought. That, that's yeah, that's again. You want you want your striker scoring. He's been 
He's been marvellous, hasn't he? Since mm, he's been oh, what, what a player. He's been brilliant since he's been there. Yeah, and this, the, these games between now and, and, and the World Cup, there'll be a, there's be a lots of ups and downs for a lot of teams, right? Um, I don't think tonight's the concern. The concern for me will be second half against Leeds and Southampton. Mm. Well, it's not the first time that uh, Ruud van Nistelrooy has caused havoc against Arsenal, this time as managers. PSV Eindhoven damaged Arsenal's perfect run in the Europa League. Luis Miguel Echegaray, Janis Mihalik. Janis, thoughts as Arsenal's perfect run ends in the Europa League? Wow. So it has uh, finally happened. I mean, finally happened in a while, right? I mean, of course, they've lost against Manchester United, but the second loss on the season for Arsenal this time in Europa League. And then where do we go from here? Do we add to the drama, Luis, here and says, wow, we told you so? Uh, I suppose if you, you know, throw enough darts at uh, at the board, you know, uh, uh, you're going to hit a bullseye if you were to say, Yes, I told you so about Arsenal. I'm going to be composed here, I think, because we could see that coming. You and I have been talking about this a little bit, right, about maybe a little bit of tiredness. Uh, you know, they look leggy. You could almost say it's been coming since uh, actually, I think, the win against Liverpool, right? I mean, if you look at the, the two games against PSV, if you look at the game against Porto, if you look at the game, even the win against Leeds, the draw against Saints... Five games running now where maybe Arsenal were not at their best. So, uh, look, I mean, you've got to bounce from this, right? Uh, uh, somehow, it gives Mikel Arteta and Arsenal a chance to refocus, say, hey, it's been good. We've been building a culture of winning. And now it's kind of soft patch a little bit. It's not at the grade. Let's see how we react. And, you know, if we look at the schedule this weekend, uh, you, can, you can bounce against Nottingham Forest at home. You have Zurich at home to win the Europa League. And then on the horizon, this massive uh, away game against Chelsea. But I think that's as much as I can say now. Uh, because, yeah, I don't want to be a drama queen in this. <laughs> we don't want you to be a drama queen, Yanis. It's okay. But, but you do raise a very good point, though. And that's about can Arsenal pick themselves up again in this situation because something that we always think about Arsenal is you know when the going gets rough they sometimes don't wake themselves up again and Mikel Arteta wants to win this group so he can alleviate his schedule can Arsenal this season with this squad can they do it Yanis answering your point basically can they pick themselves up again do you think I think they can I mean they've had a number of occasions uh, an excuse to revert to the old Arsenal, but they haven't. I mean, take this away. And look, I mean, they went away to PSV and and they've lost, I think rightfully so. I mean, number of goals called back. Uh, uh, you know, Luke de Jong came in and, and look at an assist, uh, uh, a, a goal, an assist, and, and a, a, a very a near miss on a header that could have made it 3-0, really, right after that. Uh, but 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 previously against the Saints and some of these other results, they could have easily fall and revert uh, to, to what they used to be. So I, I'm going to wait. I think they absolutely can because you have two matches, as I said. Home against Nottingham Forest. Yeah, I know Forest had a big win against Liverpool and all that, but uh, they're still Nottingham Forest. <laughs> and and I think Arsenal at home in front of their supporters can bounce, can get a win, uh, then follow that with a, a winning in, uh, winnable game against Zurich at home in Europa League. And if they do, then they will be top of the Premier League. They will continue to be top of the Europa League. And you know, things will be better. So, yeah, it's a chance to refocus, as I said. Uh, I think they're already ahead of the schedule. You and I have talked about that. Uh, I think we all understand that there's a certain limit to this Arsenal team in, in terms of uh, squad depth. Today, I mean, you know, we saw even dependable Aaron Ramsdale, you know, going fishing uh, on, on on that one goal. And, and I think, you know, can you, uh, Fabio Vieira may be the only player that I could kind of point towards today and say, you know what, he had a good, good game or decent game. Everybody else uh, struggled. <laughs> 